Good day, Johan van Dijk coming to you from CEO Cape Town. The second form of incapacity that we are going to discuss is ill health incapacity. Now, if an employee is ill, it can either be temporary or it can be permanent. If it's temporary, the extent and the nature of such an ill health or such an injury should be investigated. If an employee is going to be absent for a prolonged period of time, all measures short of dismissal should be investigated. This can include the nature of the employee's job, the period of absence, the extent of the injury and whether or not an alternative employee can be employed in that employee's position until he or she returns from the ill health break. If a person is absent for, or if an employee is ill permanently, then we have to look at whether we can adapt the employee's working environment to accommodate him or whether there is an alternative position in which to employ such an employee. Very important also is to note that the degree of the ill health plays a massive role if it comes to dismissal and the substantive fairness of such a dismissal. If an employee is ill because of an addiction to drugs or alcohol, the employer should accommodate and assist him as far as possible. For example, sending that person to rehab and if he returns, he can resume duties. If not, there might be a problem and he might be faced with an ill health incapacity. If we do an ill health incapacity inquiry, if the person can no longer work there due to ill health, it's important that the employee have the opportunity to make submissions as to why he should not be dismissed. We do that by means of an inquiry. And do also take into account that if the employee is ill or sick or injured due to an injury on duty, there is a much higher duty on the employer to accommodate such an employee in the workplace. Thank you very much.